Okay, hey everybody. We're going to talk about how to navigate the student portion of Smart Music right quick. Um, if you're just getting started with this, make sure you've gotten that login um, class code from your director and follow the instructions there in order to create your account. But once you've done that, you can get started. We're going to go up here to the login link here on the Smart Music page, then click on New Smart Music. You're going to type in your username and password that you already set up. That's going to bring you into your dashboard window. Um, sometimes the early logins took me to my profile page um, where you can double check your information um, there. So we've got our main dashboard here. There's a couple important buttons. The home button here with the little house in the top left hand corner. In case you ever get lost, you can always come back to this page by clicking here. There's some notifications um, listed here as um, are graded and completed. Um, your profile button, your um, Help Center, uh, another home button here. This has a lot of great things for you. Another home button to bring you back to your dashboard, a way to search music on your own. Um, you can check your practice analysis, how many minutes you've played um, and rehearsed on your own inside of here, um, as well as your grade books of how you've done on your assignments. So create a couple of things here for myself um, as a student to kind of show you what to do. So we have our list of windows of assignments that are due. We see our due date what it is and then these are all start buttons to begin those assignments. If I scroll down you can see I've had some assignments graded. Um, this one I did really great on. This one I used as a demo for my kids to uh, show them what it looks like when you get things wrong and I did do the whole assignment so miserable score here. Um, so finish your assignments. Don't stop before they're over. Um, over here on this side find music. So there's some new releases here so if you use this a lot you'll be able to see um, just different things um, that come up. Then we have our music categories, just other ways to kind of start with a filter for what you're looking for, whether it be a method book, maybe you're a, a middle school student and you're wanting to work in essential elements or standard of excellence. Uh, maybe you're a high school student, you're using the habits of a successful musician. Um, that's a way to find that there. And then just band orchestra music, sight reading, different exercises, solos, um, jazz if you're interested in that, choir things for our vocalists, small ensembles. Um, you can also just type in to the search bar what you want to do. Um, so uh, let's let's go ahead and look up a method book that we use, the Habits um, for Successful Musician book. So you just hit enter and you can see all the variations of that that they have published through GIA. Um, we use the Successful Musician. So it's going to load those details. On the left hand side you can see the different filters. You can look in different categories to help narrow it down if there are a lot of a lot of search results, same thing with genres, instruments, and difficulty. So you see an overview of the book, which instruments are available, who wrote it. Shout out to Scott Rush and all his folks for helping put all this stuff together for us. Um, paper copy, and it's great that it's available digitally. You can look at the different movements so you can see what the different um, exercises are in the book, because um, the menu over here in a minute is going to be a little small, so that will help you. Um, but from a student perspective, you can kind of just click on any of these and it'll pull that up. And of course, details has got all the copyright license stuff there. So um, I can click open. Now I'm a trombone player, so I've got my account set up as trombone. Um, but you can click on movement here and now you see um, how it's a little bit short. So it's hard to tell which one's which. If you know the numbers, uh, what they line up with, but you can also cross reference that over here on movement. So. I'm going to pick um, this 11A, which is a good lip slur for brass, uh, out of the book. So we're going to load that now. And you can see the exercise as it would appear in the book. And in fact, these are a little bit more detailed in the book. It just gives you the first line and tells you to change your vowel combination. So I've got my side positions here um, for trombone, for my other brass friends that have your fingerings there. Uh, woodwinds. I think on this exercise you're doing um, descending chromatic and triplets um, as well as mallets. So um, from this screen here, we have a lot of different things we can do. We can navigate to different um, exercises inside of this book. I can also, if I wanted to go look at what my friends in the flute section are working on, I can do that there. Um, coming back up here, I've got my tempo and I can type in whatever I want. Maybe I'm not ready for 120 and I want to practice it at 100. I can just type it there or I can plus or minus and then if I ever get too far away I can hit the reset button and it'll go to whatever the default setting is. 
I um, also have calibrate microphone so we can do that and it plays a little little noise to hear itself and make sure that it's working so if that doesn't work try turning up your speaker just a little bit more um, I found that super helpful Then you have your tuner um, this is a great thing to do before you get started so you know you're in tune you might have to allow permission to use your microphone um, that's a great thing there and then this is just a toggle so this menu here you'll see that go away and come back there um, and this part right here is for our count off so when we hit the play button it'll count us off and then you can go down to one um, I'd encourage you to look at your time signature and keep it some relationship to that so four for me works pretty well but maybe you are having some audio trouble or you just like longer count off to get ready maybe you've got to pick your instrument up out of your lap um, you might even want to put it up to eight if you're in three four time for example you might want to do three or six um, and up here you've got my part so I can have a uh, recorded trombone player play along with me so that's really great especially for young musicians um, to have someone to match to for tone quality we'll leave that on for now to demonstrate something in a second the metronome function here and again this is a volume slider um, you can turn it on and off with this button here and then if you want to be real real specific I know a lot of directors talk about subdividing as much as possible you can actually turn on the subdivision with a toggle box right here uh, now this drop down menu um, unless you're doing jazz or a jazz style piece you're not going to need to mess with too much because it's just got the different kinds of swing there but for our jazz friends that's a uh, option there so if I wanted to practice with this, I hit the play button here. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this back over here to the far left. See, I just kind of clicked on the note I wanted to start on. And I'm going to hit the play button here, and we'll see what it does. You see, it'll play right along with me. Uh, you might put your headphones on so you can hear. No way, don't bother parents and other folks with your speakers. Maybe that's not a problem. Um, but there's that for you. If we do that again, but we turn off my parts, I'm going to toggle that with a click here. See how it's now gray? It's off. I'm going to go back to the beginning and hit play, and you're just going to hear the metronome. Okay, you still hear the click of the metronome, but now it's your job to play that. So, um, one of the great parts about this is that you see these two little tiny icons that showed up when I clicked on this note. So on the left is going to show me a fingering chart. So it shows me what the note's called, an uh, image for trombone especially. If it was another instrument, there'd be valve combination, um, diagram, or for my woodwind friends, um, the fingering chart like you see in the back of the book. Um, and it shows two of these positions. So, so does the alternate, just like it would in your fingering chart of your book. And then if I click on the one on the right, it's going to play an example of that note for me. So if I want to know what that's supposed to sound like. I can check that for every single note. Those options are going to show up. So if you find yourself lost or maybe you're exploring a little bit and you've got a piece of music that's maybe just a little bit beyond what you know how to do so far, you can use those tools to kind of um, self-teach a little bit. So that kind of gives you an idea of how to navigate this window. Um, the next thing would be if this was an assignment, I could click on the record button and that's going to start saving things under this with my takes. So let's do that next. So just use a whistle there um, to kind of show you what different things would happen. We've got a green here. I'm not really sure why it says I did that right because I didn't even play that note. Um, but I definitely whistled the wrong pitches here. You can see this one's just incorrect. This one I whistled too early. This one is showing as a B flat and then an A flat. So it'll show you kind of how you messed up so you can make some self corrections as you go. Um, again, you can click on the note and then I can click on the slide position there. All these are going to be in the first position, obviously, because they're in the same partial. No, not same partial, I apologize. They're in the same harmonic series um, as we go. Um, as for the rest of the exercise, so there's one way to do that. Now I have an option here. I can hit play and I can play back what I just did so I can listen to how I did without playing. I also have these takes here in this drop down menu. If you were doing an assignment, there would be a submit button right here that you would click and that would send that in to your teacher. Uh, if you click save, it's going to save that to your computer. Um, I can do another take here, and it's just going to add down here. I don't have to hit the save button. Then you can delete takes. Um, they've got most recent and then best scores. And that way you can do a lot of practice and get the best take possible. Uh, if you're a percussionist, you need to check out this assessment um, 
menu here. Um, you can show assessment and percussion clap mode. So say you're working on a triangle part or a snare drum part or some other non-pitched percussion, you're going to want to make sure that that's selected. And then you can use a practice pad, you can clap, you can snap, anything that's going to have a hard attack so the computer can pick up the rhythm that you're playing. I found that for percussion, this is useful because as a director I can listen to what you did, but as um, an automatic assessment from Smart Music, this is a place where it could get a little bit better. Um, I know it's already better than it used to be years ago when I used it before. Um, and then here, average tolerance. If you're a beginner, easy tolerance is going to give you some room for error as you're kind of learning. All the way up to strict tolerance for those performers that are really, really knocking it out. So that's a way to kind of increase your difficulty settings. Then you can go over here to the loop. And for this exercise, it would take us through the entire exercise. Uh, but if maybe your director assigns you four measures to work on, um, what this will let you do is it'll just repeat those measures over and over again without having to stop. And here's an option to use to count off between loops. That way you can kind of catch your breath, think about what you did, and try again. You can turn that off, and it's just kind of loop, 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 loop over and over again. Um, which can be really useful when practicing, not necessarily on an assignment, but practicing. Um, the next thing you can click on is display. Um, if you're colorblind and you can't really differentiate between the colors of the notes here, you can click that on and that'll provide some level of assistance for that. Um, highlight the measure. This just kind of helps provide a tracking system for our eyes as it moves. You can see what it's doing there. And then beat cursor, there's a couple options. The beat cursor follows the beat of the piece, okay, the metronome. The flow cur cursor is kind of like Guitar Hero and just kind of scrolls across the screen, screen nice and smooth. The note cursor is going to follow the notes. You can turn cur the cursor off. Um, I'd encourage you to have some kind of cursor going on so you have a way to um, track it on the screen with your eyes. Um, and then we have zoom over here, so maybe I want to see more of the page. I know what's going on, or maybe I need to really, really see this um, so I can make it real large. You can also go full screen mode, which makes it even bigger, and gets rid of all the extra menu bars. And as you saw, you can hit escape to get out of that. Um, and if you're working on multiple pages, you saw that blip up here for just a second, um, you can toggle back and forth between those here. Um, so that kind of helps us navigate um, our assignment window and our music window. Um, again, we can go over here to this menu, and we can go back home. We can find more music. We can go to our gradebook. And we can go to our practice analysis. So we're going to go back to our home menu. And again, we can see these that we've already turned in and they've been graded. So um, Smart Music records the time you spend on assignments that you have. And then it also records the time you spend exploring. And then it lets your director know what kind of music you were looking up, um, which I found real helpful. Um, seeing what my kids are looking at, um, Star Wars music, different things which could help when playing a concert, um, just to see what they're into. The biggest thing that I want my students to do is to practice every day. So this tool allows them to do a little bit of assignment and a little bit of for fun because we need to have fun when we play. So I hope this has been helpful for you, and uh, we'll see you next time.